Welcome. My name is Mark Anthony DuBose Jr. I was born July 4th, 1986. I want to say uh, thank you for tuning in to try to figure out some more about your dog. Because one thing that I just, just know is, is the, the simple, the, the fundamental things with being able to work with dogs. I don't go towards the complex things to try to get you to get in a good place. I, I go down to the simple basics. And the simple basics are the things that we as a people just really should focus the majority of our time on. Because when you get the simple basics down, you're going to have an overall great experience. And one thing I want to talk about today is relationship or relationship building. I think something is going on today that I, I don't, <laughs> I just straight up going to say, what I'm going to say right now, and I, and I try to dance around it. I've already done a take one. I, I can't. I try to do the, the calm, slow approach with my speech. I just can't talk slow, people. It is what it is. If you can't understand what I'm saying, there's this cool feature on this YouTube that we got the 1.0. 1 I guess that's a normal. Drop it down to 0.75, and for me personally, I listen to all my content at 0.75 and 2x, and that's probably why I speak so fast. But at the same time, I don't know how to, to say what I say with just trying to go slow, because when I do, I go into <laughs> straight up manipulative talk, manipulative speech, double speech, double talk. I gotta just speak how I speak, because otherwise I'm, I'm pre-thinking thinking too much, and I don't wanna lie to you. And that's the one thing that I think that is what's going on today is we're getting lies. And that's the one thing that I don't ever want to be about. And for me, for me today, the, the main thing I want to talk about in this relationship is how to get a good, solid, quality, loving, compassionate, caring relationship with my dog. As opposed to going towards the other side of that, that I'm getting a relationship where my dog is pushy. My dog is unruly. My dog is not paying attention to me. Dog, my dog is blowing me off. I don't know how many of y'all households I go to that you say the dog's name. You say, hey, Johnny. And the dog just, just looks at you and it's just... It does not, it doesn't even respond. It doesn't even react. It's just, it's, it's just, it's, it's clueless, man. I don't want to say clueless. It knows what it's doing. It doesn't want to listen to you. And that's why we have to go towards those forms of pressure. Uh, treats as well. I got to give them treats to come and try to uh, play the trickery to get them to stay with me. I got to use a leash. I got to use this. I got to use this. I got to use this to get the dog to come stay with me because the, the, the dog just doesn't want to actually just be with you. And I want to talk about how to get the dog to just want to be with you. And that comes down to the understanding of trust and respect. And, and if you don't understand what these two terms are, then I'm going to have to go further into more detail of trust and respect. But trust and respect equals relationship. Those two are equal that. And I can put more out there that with trust and with respect, I can put patience, compassion, willingness. I can put forgiveness. I can put understand. I can put all these words further out there. But all those words come down into creating relationship. And there's all sorts of relationships that we can have. We can have what I'm going to say is a positive relationship or we can have a negative relationship. We can have a, a relationship where the dog wants to listen because there's not say something benefiting for it to do to listen to you, but it's going to do it because it, it trusts you and it, and, and it understands you and, and you're kind and you're, and you're clear and your expectations are not like overwhelming and it's just, just simple for the dog to understand. Or we can go towards a negative side of a relationship where the dog is listening to you out of what I'm going to straight up say is make it simple, fear. The dog knows that if it doesn't pay attention to you, it's going to have some sort of negative consequence to it, such as e-collar, such as prong collar, such as even slip leash. I'm even getting a little weary about that leash myself, not in the sense of training and teaching, but in the sense of trying to force the dog to do something that it doesn't want to do and, and, and demanding that it's doing it and not giving the dog a choice. Because at the end of the day, all, all of this stuff is, is, is very, very forceful. And I'm still doing some things that I used to do, and I'm trying to get away from it. And I'm realizing just <laughs> simply removing, doing more and more nothingness, my own self, every day. I'm seeing just extreme high level of results. Because it's just, it's a matter of allowing the dog to make that choice what it wants to do at the end of the day. The dog, if it doesn't like you, you need to hang out, slow down, stop, and try to impose yourself on that dog to try to get it to forcefully like you. Because that's where you're going into the negative side of it. That's where if you're smothering the dog, you're giving it pets and pets and pets, you're giving the dog treats and treats and treats, you are go going into a negative relationship. Because now you're in a, what I'm going to say is a manipulative re relationship. And a manipulative relationship is going to continue to keep on getting there. That's why my dog is getting more pushy. That's why my dog is not listening more to me. That's why my dog is, is demanding. That's why my dog is, is just, just, just ruthless, man. And the only words I can use with that is when you go down that manipulative rate way to get your dog to listen to you, it's evil. It's, it's just it's absolute extreme level of chaos because your dog is just pushing your buttons with every little thing. Give me this treat. Give me that treat. Give me this toy. Give me that toy. Give me this. Give me this you know, access to the bed. Give me this access to the couch. Give me this. Give me this. Give me this. More, 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 more. To the point that you can't even go anywhere with the dog because the dog is just pushing everything and, and making everything in its, its life happen. Because how did you start that relationship? By doing that to the dog. So the dog is just matching you and now you're moving forward. There's, that's, that's, you're building a relationship, but that's not a, I'm going to say, proper way of building a relationship. That's why most dog trainers today, when they're talking about building a relationship with the dog, they're saying, oh, let's do obedience. Let's do sit. Let's do down. Let's do place. Let's do all these things. And that's how I'm going to build a relationship. You're building that relationship off of manipulation. 
on trying to get the dog to do something for the best intentions of what you are forcing and dictating to the dog to do, and that's why that dog looks the way that it looks. As opposed to there's a whole other side over here where, where you're going to build that relationship through trust and respect out of the dog being able to trust you and respect you and realize it. There's some core fundamental things that the dog needs to recognize about you before you do anything. And the dog needs to be able to stay around you, being able to be in your presence of, and being able to realize that nothing bad is going to happen to it. Because again, a lot of us, we don't know where our dog came from. And even if you got an eight-week-old eight, week, eight week old puppy, six-week-old puppy, that dog came from something that it doesn't know who you are. It came from something that was able to protect it, able to guard it, able to take care of it, able to do everything for it, and then it got stripped away. It's mother. It got stripped away from its mother that was able to just d d defend for it, man. <laughs> the mama dogs, man, they defend for their they babies. Like, it is, they go to death for their for they litter. I mean, it's, it's insane. Just watch some videos of what the mothers do to try to get food for their for they, for they puppies when they start needing to get food. It is, they are crazy. So they go from someone who is their ultimate protector to you. And you got, they got taken away from their ultimate protector and got to you. They don't know who you are. They don't know your intentions. So the number one way is to really build that trust and build that, that respect from that dog with you is to do nothing with the dog but have the dog around you, close to you. That's where the leash is amazing because that's how the dog has evolved to us as humans. Because you put the dog on leash, uh, where are you at, uh, get down. You put the dog on leash and you have the dog hang out with you. Allow the dog to be able to study you, see you day after day. I mean, even week after week, I would push this as long as absolute possible to just have the dog there so that they could see, okay, I'm in this person's presence, nothing hurt me. Nothing damaged me. Nothing's destroyed me. Nothing's irritating me. Nothing's messing me up. Nothing, everything is good to go. And that's where the trust starts to happen day after day after day after day of doing absolutely nothing with that dog so they could see that nothing bad and or even nothing good is going to happen. And that's where for me, I, I've been trying to figure out language and, and different lingo and put labels on there, but I got to put a new label on myself, what kind of trainer I am. I'm a neutral dog trainer. I'm not positive. I'm not negative. I'm putting that on the dog to make sure that the dog is going to see which side of it that it wants. And when the dog is going to primarily choose to want to be in the positive side of that as opposed to the negative side of it. That's why when I speak, my dogs do. Because they're like, there's something good going to happen out of that because I'm not here to hurt you. I'm not here to damage you. I'm not here to, to be ruthless to you. I'm not here to, to, to demand anything upon you. I'm here to just live. I'm here to just be. I'm here to just do what we want to do together. And we're going to have good time at that. And we're going to just excel at that. As opposed to me trying to, day one, the dog doesn't trust me, the dog doesn't respect me, and I'm going to start to just sit, sit, sit down, 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 place, 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 and start doing all this stuff. The dog is just looking back at me like, gosh, like, I don't, why should I, for one, listen to you? And that's why you have to continue. This is, this is the, pro, the progression to hear, people. This is something that I've just seen as an, as an overall of uh, being able to just see people, do my surveys, and study, and listen to what everyone's saying. Going to the treats first, it, uh, what would you call it, force-free a part of the dog training first. It sounds pretty, so we go there first. And it's like, oh, this is nice, this is cool. But then you start realizing that you are not getting the success that you're looking for. So then you go towards the balance side of it. Uh, or get down, I know it's raining, we be all right. We just sitting in the rain today. <laughs> you go to the balance side of it because you're like, I'm not finding any, any sort of help. Uh, get down, I'm not finding any sort of help. So now I, I, got, I gotta add a little bit of pressure involved in it. And these, these people, they're, you know, they're not using too much pressure, so it's not so bad. So then you're like, okay, this is where we're going. So then you start training the sits down because the, the, the trainer is saying, just like I used to say, and I probably even said even three videos ago, of the dog doesn't understand the sit unless you're using the leash to tell it to, to sit. And I'm going to straight up say that that is true. But it's a matter of that dog doing it out of fear, out of frustration, out of anxiety. And that, that's why it understands it. Because it knows it's, it doesn't have a choice. You're not giving it a choice. Especially with... Uh, I like my slip leashes. It's hard for me to get out of it because I've been using them for so long. But you're going life or death with the dog. When I'm holding that slip leash on that dog and I'm holding that pressure steady, it's going life or death. If the dog decides it doesn't want to do it, the dog is literally going to choke itself to death. So the dog has to make a choice. Do I want to live or do I want to die? And the dog is going to make a very, very wise decision. I don't want to die. So it's going to sit. And it's like, good job. And then you give it a treat for just halfway killing. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> you just halfway took the dog to death and then you give it a treat like, good job. This is where I'm gonna say things are very confusing because now we definitely don't have any respect going on here. Now the dog, uh, get down. Now the dog for sure is like, dude, you bot took me to death. Then now you're giving me a reward. What the heck is going on right now? What, what is happening? Who the heck are you? You have the power to kill me and the power to praise me at the same time and, 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 and you're mixing the two. 
you're not like just over here and over, but you're, you're mixing the two. So then you're like, oh man, that's, that, and then you're getting some sort of success. And then you realize, okay, well, he wasn't sitting for the treats, but now he sits for the treats and the leash. So, so now the dog understands it. So now I just use the leash to get the dog to sit. Now the dog is sitting. But you get to that time, you get to that day that that now no longer works. That slip leash is no longer effective on you're just putting slight pressure up and get the dog to sit. Because the dog is like, the heck is happening here? And that you have zero respect, you have zero trust. Because your dog doesn't, I guarantee you this, your dog does not trust you if the dog, because this is what I was running into and it's just verifying myself with my Dalmatian. And that's why I almost like everything is set up for a purpose and a, and a reason and that's just the way my life moves because I'm a, I'm a believer in God and it is what it is. But I was watching my relationship with my Dalmatian be pretty decent to getting kind of a little worse and worse. Me forcing, forcing down, forcing down, forcing down, forcing down. And then she's looking at me like, dang, what the heck, man? What the heck? What's going on here? And then I decided to just, let me just stop that for a couple days and just see what's going to happen. And I started <laughs> seeing a, a, complete different, a, a complete difference go on here. But what happens is you end up needing pressure and then you end up needing more pressure. And that's where the other collars and the other systems and the other everything starts to get, get incorpororated. Because now since the simple slip leash, because this is, this is what they was telling me about this dog in the, in the dog training school. I was only using slip leash on him and he, he did pretty darn good. I got through basic obedience, intermediate obedience, but the, the, uh, the, the advanced obedience we were doing was going off leash and things was getting a little more complicated. So I was like, there's no way you're gonna be able to get this dog through with that leash, you're gonna have to upgrade. So I upgraded him to the prong collar and oh my goodness, it was like a, in my eyes at that time, looking at it like this is the world's greatest thing. The dog is responding, it's listening, and it only is because it's in fear of its life. So of course it's gonna make the wise decision of, I don't wanna die, I wanna be alive. And I have worked with dogs that are willing to die because they, they will choke themselves out on that slip leash and they will literally pass out. I have worked with dogs that will do that. So anyone out here talking about how to train certain dogs, if you've never dealt with a dog like that, I would, I would like to see you, what you're going to do with something like that in that situation where the, the dog says, I don't care about the pressure. I've worked with dogs that you put the e-collar on 100 or in the max, you double box it, you put them on it, and they blow, they just, they just muscle through it. Where do we go now? That's where a lot, we're running to because it starts with that simple pressure. Oh, now he's doing it. And then he stops doing it after a couple of weeks. And then you need more pressure and more pressure and more pressure and more pressure and more pressure. And then you get to the point that most of y'all are not comfortable with going so far. So then you're like, what do I do? What's going on here? Because everything that we're doing is so, such a high, just ruthlessness to these dogs that they're getting more and more pushy and because they don't respect us and they don't trust us. And that's the number one, the, the little thing that we need to work on with that relationship aspect is respect and trust. And respect and trust, we cannot fight it, we can't force it, we cannot put fear into them, we cannot give them enough praise to get them to respect us. And that's why I'm constantly saying, I'm gonna continue to keep on saying the same thing because I see the results with my own personal dogs that I used to have all these issues with. I had the same problems everybody has. This dog in specific, I got to the point that he looked decent, but then it, he, he stopped listening. And then I needed more pressure. I put the e-collar back on him again. And then I started putting it up more and more. And then the dude started running away. Then I was like, man, I'm really going negative right now. The dog was doing everything that I see. Everyone's dogs doing their household. All of my dogs were doing this. All of them. And, and I was running into these issues. Need more, 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 more pressure. And I was, I, I was, shoot, I, I'm not going to lie. I'm not scared or shy of going to more pressure. Because I'm just like, whatever, man. It is what I grew up tough. <laughs> so I'm going to straight up say, I grew up tough. I grew up where, where y'all talk about getting spankings. Like, I, I, I grew up tough. I grew up rough. So I, I'm not shy to, like, go to the extremes with more pressure. And I realized it didn't matter how extreme I went, because this is what I can even say with my own self as a human being, as a child growing up with being tough, that no matter how much pressure you go, it still didn't fix any of the issues. The issues were still there. The issues actually started getting worse to the point that now you're starting to get a little, feel a little dangerous. They're starting to show teeth at you. They're starting to growl at you. They're starting to they just keep going more and more because we're not focused on what the dogs are looking for as far as respect. We're not focused on what the dogs are looking for as far as trust. And the same thing I'm gonna say with us as human beings, I don't think the mass majority of human beings on this planet understand what, a, what relationship actually truly is, what it means, what it's all about. As soon as you start manipulating, you are this, your relationship is done, finished. It's, it's done, it's squashed. As soon as you have to go to that route, as soon as you are trying to convince something or somebody to do something that you want that they don't feel comfortable with, your relationship is done. It's, it's finished. You, you're done. In, in, the, in reality, it's, it's the, the beautiful thing I can say is dogs are, can at least recover. 
and that's what I'm saying a beautiful, a, a, a weird but cool thing about dogs. But human beings, as soon as you go that route, you are done. You are finished. That's why a majority of our relationships today are trash. They're done. They're finished. So many people out here struggling right now how to maintain a simple relationship with somebody, how to, how to stay married, how to this, how to this. Because as soon as you start manipulating, as soon as you start the deceitfulness, you, you are done. And why, 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 why is it like that? Because that thing and that person doesn't want to be forced and pushed into doing for you that way. They want to they be asked to. They want to be able to learn and grow with themselves without someone dictating and forcing on top of them what they have to do. And that's what we're doing to the dogs. We're thinking we're doing great things. Oh, I'm getting my dog to sit. I'm getting my dog to down. But you're, you're teaching and you're telling, you're forcing your dog to do stuff that it doesn't give a crap about. It doesn't care. All it wants to do is just live and exist. And it's for us to put our boundaries upon the dog of what you can do and how far you can go. So that's why I put leash on dog. Dude, you can go about five or six feet away from me. Outside of that bubble, uh, it's scary out there. I don't know what's going to happen. But, but if you stay in this bubble, you can trust me. I'll keep you safe. I'll give you what you need. If you stay in this bubble, you're going to be fed. You're going to get water. You're going to get a house to stay in. You're going to get toys. You're going to get treats. You're going to get all this if you just stay in this bubble. But if you go out there and start doing that mess, I don't know. So that's a boundary that I put upon the dog. And when I put that simple boundary, because that's one thing that I just realized about my shepherd is I trained him way different than any of my other dogs, that I allowed him to just pull. And the same thing I do with my Dalmatian. I allow her to just pull. And, and I, got, I didn't like that she had anything on her neck pull, so that's, I, I got her specific pulling harness. And I just let her pull, man. I let, we go for walks and she pulls. I mean, she don't pull anymore today. She walks to a perfect heel next to me at this moment. And she may bounce up here and bounce back, bounce up, bounce here. But I had zero expectations. Because as soon as you start expecting someone or something to do this the way you want it, when you want it, you destroy your relationship again. Your relationship is finished. Because no one or no, nothing wants to be treated that way. They, they want to be able to, to freely, naturally figure out what's going on here. They don't want to be dictated to, this is it, this is how it's going. You just destroy the relationship. And the more that we keep doing these things, such as applying pressure to the dog of, of just the dog goes off and you just snap that leash and tell that dog to come back to stay on the leash, you may have fix that one little thing going on there. But since you've destroyed that relationship by doing that to the dog, now you're going to have issues somewhere else that are going to start to amplify. It doesn't seem uh, dangerous or whatever at this moment, but at some point, someday, you're going to watch that. It just gets to that point that now, oh my goodness, I wish my dog was pulling on a leash because I can't stand that my dog now is putting teeth on me for just moving around in my house. You're going to wish to go back to that pulling because now the new problems that you're starting to see that's where the danger starts to come in. And that's what majority of this dog training stuff that no one is talking about. No one's talking about the, the later ons. We fix these issues for now. And that's why we go to the treats at first because it's like, oh, that's the, 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 the most friendliest, fun, exciting, no pressure on the dogs. It's, it's the nicest way to start. And then you go to the boat, the, the balance. And then when that doesn't work, you, you call in that guy that's ready to just lay the law down and just, just uh, what do we got over here? Oh, get down. Oh, shadow all done. Uh... Oreo, you can go check it out. You can go. Oreo, you can go. I don't know what this is right here. We got something. This dog don't ever bark. Are we good? All right, get down. Uh, everybody get down. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's just with it. When this dog barks, I'm like, what the heck is going on? I got a person or something right here. Something's going on. Something strange is happening. I just got to verify that my surroundings are good. I'm trying to I'm trying to stay safe out here as much as everyone else trying to stay safe. Uh, Oreo, get down. Then you go to the next guy or the girl that comes in and just goes straight to the pressure. And we've seen these videos of, of just the straight up hardcore, just just late, just, just la only way I can say it is just lashing on the dog, just going absolutely wild. And then you start, you see success. But then you realize now I have problems here, 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 here still. It didn't actually do anything because we didn't worry about fixing the fundamental thing that the dogs are looking for, and that's the relationship. Because every single thing that we're trying to do to say fix the relationship, we are destroying it more and more and more. And that's why for me, a lot of y'all are, are, are confused of how to get my dog to this, how to get my dog to that, how to get my dog to stop jumping on me, how to this, how to this. If your dog is in tune and listening to you, it will not do what it is that you're telling it to do. This dog, my border collie, I allow him to jump on me. I don't care. He jumps on me since day one I got him. He was like 12 weeks old I got him. Every single day this dog jumps on me. But he knows because I could tell him, not right now. 
And he's like, oh, okay, not right now. When someone comes over, or we don't, no, no jumping right now. He's like, oh, okay, we're not jumping right now. I don't need to beat this dog. I don't need a, to, to, to knee this dog. I don't need to use no leash on this dog. I don't need to do nothing to this dog. But just simply say to him, I don't want to do that anymore. And that's not just because it's my agreeable border collie. That is also with all the rest of my dogs. They know what I'm looking for. And I can say, hey, you can jump now. Because all my dogs, except Johnny's one, he don't actually do it. But all my dogs are able to jump on me. I don't care. But I can also say to them, no, not right now. And it's, there's no hostile, nothing, nothing hostile going on. Because that's where, when you have a good relationship, the dog says, oh, okay, I, can, I trust you. Everything's fine. Oh, okay, I can, I can go over there and lay down. Everything is fine. Oh, okay, I can go over there. Everything is going to be all right. Oh, okay, I could just move with you. Oh, okay, I can walk with you on leash because everything is okay out here. Oh, okay, I don't need to go chase that or do anything because everything is fine right now. And that's what we're looking for for our dogs. Not coming in and just, just beating them, man. Because that's at the end of the day, it was going, I don't care if you're giving them treats. If you're giving them treats, in my opinion, at the end of the day, with what I see, with what I continue to keep working with, the treats are causing the dogs to get way, way more uh, aggressive looking than anything else that I've ever seen out here. Oreo, we're good. Come here. I'll get down. Than, than anything else, because those are the calls that I get. My dog is ground, my dog is showing teeth, my dog just, just punctured me, my dog just made me have to get stitches right now. And I say, what, what you been primarily doing? I've been giving a treat to doing this, and I'm like, I hear you. And this, is, this isn't for me to put someone in, oh, you're being dangerous, because I got nothing to sell you. I got nothing to sell you. I got no course that I could sell you. If you want, <laughs> I could do something straight up right now, it's because we're, we're stuck in this, like, we're stuck in this, that next aha moment. If you really want some real help, you really could send someone some money that you that you that, that that you think is going to be able to to like all I can say is send your local rescue twenty five hundred dollars and listen to what I'm saying. So you got skin in the game, you got money because some of y'all don't work off of just just being free. It can't work. How could that guy give everything out there for free? Because I'm telling you to stop doing everything that you're doing. And if you just stop it, everything will be fine. I've done this so many times that I come in for a free consultation, show you what I'm looking for, and they're like, oh, I don't know, I, I need help, this and this. And then I come back three days later because they weren't doing what I was saying. And I said, okay, write me that check, $3,500, all right. And then I tell them the exact same thing again and they get, they get success. And they're like, oh, this is working. <laughs> Sometimes that's the way the world works. But I don't want it to be that way. I want you to just realize that you can get out of this just, what is it, the rat race, the craziness, the madness, and be able to just do something for yourself. Because everything that we're doing is destroying our relationship. Just, just, I want, that's all I want is to people think based on what I do and what I say. It's just to think. Think everything through. Don't worry about what I'm doing. Because what I'm doing is still stuff that in reality I'm rethinking and putting on my own self of saying some stuff I'm doing I don't, I don't like. And I'm not getting the, to say success that I want. I'm not happy with. I'm not happy with uh, giving my Dalmatian leash pressure and, and every single day having to do it more and more and more. And her just giving me more and more pushback. I don't like that. I don't want that. Because I'm destroying my relationship. And when I stop doing that, I'm like, I'm taking her for walks now, especially today. She's just looking at me. She's just walking right next to me. We're just hanging out. She sees the squirrels. She sees, she's not even taking off at them anymore. She's like, she's like, she, we're, we're starting to get in tune because she's like, dude, I don't want to do that. Since I, I haven't done it long with her. So it's only been like, what, not even two or three weeks worth of it. And, and she's like, I don't like this. I don't want you to do this to me. And, and I was just like, I don't care what you want. I'm telling you what to do. I'm telling you what to do. I'm making you do this. You don't get a choice. And she's like, I don't want to do that. And then now when I stop, she lays down. She just hangs up. She's like, I don't need you to force me. I'll just do it. I know what you're looking for. And, and, and everything is so much calmer when I stopped the whole just you betters and you have tos because I was destroying my relationship. And, and I just had this. She just looked at me one day. I think like was it yes, yesterday? Yesterday we went for a run. She just looked at me. She just gave me this eye of like, dude, you're, you, we're messing up. I don't like you anymore. And I was like, I don't like this. I don't want it. I don't want it to deal with this. And that's what's going on with a lot of y'all's dogs. You think that your dog likes you, but yet you're getting irritated. If you're getting irritated, there's something there's something hostile going on. It's like your, your spidey senses inside of you are kicking in to say, what you're doing is not what you should be doing. If you're getting irritated, you're getting frustrated, you're, you're getting to that point that, that you're like, I, I'm, I need to get louder, I need to yell more, I need to stand up, I need to do If you're doing more of that, your relationship is trash. It's just going. And your dog and your spouse and your kids are all trying to explain it to you, but you're not listening. And you're just con continuing to keep on going, doing whatever the heck you want. And that's, that's what we're struggling right now. We're not focused on the positives of the relationship building. And it comes down to the dog to be able to naturally come to us when they're ready. Put your dog with you. And I'm gonna say this, and I'm gonna probably have to make a whole thing every single day to just say the same thing right here so that you can understand exactly what I'm saying. You grab you a leash, 
And at the end of the day, I do not care what kind of leash it is because I'm doing stuff with harnesses on my dogs that months ago I was, oh, it's impossible to get a dog not to pull if you're using a harness. You have to use this slip leash. I said that. I got videos even saying it. And I'm proving to myself every single day that I'm a liar, that you do not need to do that. You do not need it. You do not need to be on all this, this crazy madness. You do not need it. You do not need the treats to get them to do it. You do not need it. All you need is a you, something to be able to connect you and dog together and keep the dog with you. Keep the dog with you. Don't pet the dog. Allow the dog to come to you. Allow the dog to sit there, especially if you just got a dog from the shelter. Do not touch the dog. Do not interact with, the, put the dog on the leash and just hang out. Allow the dog to sniff, to realize its new, its new uh, environment and realize everything that's new that's going on around. Allow it to be able to realize that it's safe. And then once it realizes it's safe, and then it's going to start to check in on you. Are you safe? And then it's going to say, okay, this person hasn't done anything weird to me, hasn't poked me, hasn't this, hasn't that, hasn't forced me, hasn't, hasn't done any weird stuff. This person is also safe. So I now trust this person. You got one part of the, this equation done. The dog can now trust you. Now the dog needs to get to the point of being able to respect you. And that comes through the time and consistency and the patience. And one major thing is forgiveness. The dog's going to mess up and you need to instantly forgive them. It's okay, let's move forward, it messed up. The dog lunged at another dog and it was barking and screaming. I, I forgive you, let's move forward and let's go on. It's okay, then the dog is going, that's the number one thing that I'm gonna say is where the respect really comes is forgiveness, man. Forgiveness. And the more that you are forgiving, the more that that dog is not gonna be able to put, in, put itself in its position that you need to constantly keep forgiving it. It starts with us forgiving first. And then that, the world will come back and it will forgive us. That's the way this world works. We put it out there first. And that's, where, that's how we gain the respect. And then once you gain that respect from that dog, who cares about sit? Who cares about down? Because when, whatever you are look, looking for and desiring, the dog is going to do that. It's going it's, it's, it's to happen. There's no way that it's not going to happen. It's going to happen. I'm watching simple things come on with my dogs that are just, just mind-blowing to me. Just, just wild to me on how the more and more less that I continue to keep doing, the better and better I keep seeing my stuff get. The more and more less that I'm, that I'm feeling like anxious, I, oh, you better, you better, I see a dog, I see a person because my Dalmatian, she love her some people, she love her some dogs, she want to go and meet everybody. The more I'm like, no, 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 don't go and meet them, or the more I'm just like, I'm walking. We're walking, girl, let's go. And we're walking, and she, she pulls, and she's looking, and day one, she would stop, man, she would stop. And I'm pulling, and I got a bungee leash on my, on my uh, harness, so it makes it a little different. It's not like it can't drag her, so we're just, <laughs> it's pretty funny. It's a pretty neat leash. <laughs> I definitely recommend them because uh, uh, it, 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 like, it's not so much, it, it gives you shock absorbent. So when a dog hits the end of the leash, it's not like a, a hit. It's just a, it's a, it's a bounce, and it's, it's much more pleasurable for me, and I notice for the dog as well. I like these bungee leashes. They're really neat. But uh, she would stop and just hold her feet, and then today we just move along. We just keep moving. And then there were the times that she would see someone, we would walk past them, and she would just, she couldn't get out of it. She's like, oh, oh, they're leaving, oh, they're leaving. Oh, it would be like that for literally a half mile. I'm not joking about no half mile. Half mile for me moving, it's, it's four, three, four, three and a half minutes. Three minutes, this girl is still looking back. Oh, oh, but the, there's a person. And then today, now we're just on a mission because I'm no longer in this like, oh my goodness, you better, you better, you better. I'm just like, we're going to, we're going to, here we are. We're, go we're gonna make it happen. I'm not forcing it. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not putting these high expectations on her that this is what I'm demanding from her. And this is stuff that I'm universally doing with more and more people that I help with today. And I'm seeing just incredible things happen because I'm, I'm just getting the dog to understand who we are as opposed to me forcing the dog to be what I, at the end of the day, really gonna say want it to be. That's why still for me, I have great success. This is where some people are y'all challenged right now because you got the wrong dog. You got the wrong dog. You wanted a dog to be able to just hang out with, but you got yourself a high energy border collie that loves to work and move and chase and herd and, and, and gather animals. And, and you're stumbling and fumbling. And you got yourself a, and, 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 and shoot, stay the heck away from Dalmatians. If you do not want to walk this dog or get yourself a treadmill and teach this dog how to be able to move three, four, five, six hours a day. It needs to be walking, running, doing something hours every single day. And you're gonna have a nice dog. Because my girl's already, she's already super happy this past two months being able to do these walks. She's loving it. And as soon as I started the down game on her, she's like, hey, buddy, hey, hey, you know, I, we, we was getting cool. 
we were getting there, you know, but, but now you, 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 messed, you just messed it up. But thankfully, dogs will come back. The human beings, they may not come back. The human beings don't forgive the same way because dogs forgive like crazy. And that's why I say forgiveness is going to be able to bring you respect because the more that you just forget, oh, he messed up, it's okay, let's move on. Don't hold any grudges. Don't have anything there. Don't, don't have anything with it. Just we're, gonna, we're, we're, we're moving on. You know, it, it's okay. It's okay. The faster and more every single day, every single week, you're going to watch things just start to get better and better and better. That's just the way that this life works. And I don't know how to make it more simple, but I'm going to continue to keep on trying every single day to say the exact same thing in a different way and hopefully give different stories with different scenarios to just get more people to understand that you want to build a relationship and the relationship is based on trust and respect. Trust and respect are, are what you're looking for. And trust is the easier part of it. Because all you got to do is just hang out with the dog and just don't touch the dog. Just be with the dog and show the dog the boundaries that you're looking for. You put the dog on a leash and you have the dog know it's got to stay close to you so that the dog can see you. It's still alive. Nothing hurt it. Nothing damaged it. Nothing's doing anything with it. When it's sleeping, it was able to sleep. A lot of things we love to do with dogs is the dog is sleeping and go over to it and start petting it. You just disrespected that dog. It's hanging out, sleeping. Why would, a lot of this I'm going to say is, I don't like humanizing them, but gosh, dog it. Would you like to be sleeping, relax, hanging out, and have someone come up to you and just, oh, oh how, how you doing? How you doing? How the heck would you feel? Two o'clock in the morning, someone comes up and does that to you. You're going to be irritated as all heck can be. You're going to lose respect for that person. The first two times, you're like, oh, whatever. But after a eight or tw 20 times of that, you're going to be quick to punch that person in the face. And thankfully, dogs don't get quick to anger like we do because, man, some of y'all will be destroyed right now by your dogs. They are so forgiving. But just leave them alone. You leave them alone, and they're going to start to trust you. And then when you start to be able to get them to do what it is that's going to go, like, give them their exercise, get them physically tired, get them mentally tired, get, the, get them working like that, give them their food and stop playing trickery with their food, they'll start to respect you. And then when you start to get that respect, oh, my goodness, you got nothing you need to worry about. And thankfully, my Johnny man is starting to get to the point that we're, 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 we're real tuned with getting very respectful towards each other now. He didn't like to be close to me, and I was forcing this and forcing that and smothering all on him and touching all on him and doing all this. And, and, and you better this and you better that. And he's just like, dude, wait till you, wait till you take <laughs> There's a few times that I, because my, my German Shepherd, I, 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 I had to steer clear of doing any obedience stuff with him because he gave me that look. If you do that one more time, I'll bite you. And I'm like, well, we're not doing that anymore. So I've, <laughs> I haven't done that stuff with him because he looked at me like, try it and he he's already done it to people and he started looking at me that same way you get me to sit like that one more time man you take that leash off watch what I'm going to do to you and I started getting a little nervous a little nervous so me being a little nervous I'm like oh I need to put more pressure on him so so that I'm the one on top and there's no amount of pressure that you can put on these dogs to get them to in reality at the end of the day be be that fearful of us these dogs are 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 tough they're we are nothing when a dog is in its prime of doing what it's doing, when a dog is confident. And some, some of y'all dogs, you got uh, softer, more submissive dogs are, are the most of the dogs, but some of y'all don't have that. And your dogs will follow through with that growl. Your dogs will follow through with that look in their eye that's like, I'm about to do something. If you don't stop disrespecting the dogs, the dogs are just asking for us to respect them. They are asking for us to trust them. They're asking for that. They're begging for that. And when we give it to them, you, you, you are not going to have the said issues that you have. And that's something that uh, what dog trainers out here as an overall want to say to you, you can't do this on your own and you have to pay money for this. And the one thing that I will admit and agree with with that statement is since we're so far in this in our life, just overall life in general, because I've seen the tests that these people do, that there's a guy or a girl that stands there with a sign that says free hugs and people come up and they get their hug, man. And then literally someone right next to them will stand there with a sign and say hugs, $5. And the free hugs guy's line starts to just diminish and people go over to the $5 one. We, we think that what we pay for, we're going to get more from. And that's, that's the, the downfall. And that's why for me, I, I could really help out a whole lot of people if you did put money into it. But I don't want to take your money. That's why I say go give it to the shelter. Go to the, your local shelter, your dog shelter, or any of your sanctuaries, any of your stuff, any of your rescues, and write them a check for $3,500 and listen to what I'm saying about putting dog on a leash and just hanging out with it and give yourself some time. When the dog starts to approach you, starts to hang with you, you give him a little bit of pets and you just relax. You don't do no obedience work with them. You don't do no nothing for, I would say, two, three months minimum. And then you can start incorporating that later on. So the dog finally trusts you. And then you start showing them how to be, do things in a kind way. Then the dog will start to respect you. 
and then you're going to have the nicest freaking dog on the planet. Then everyone is just like, how did you get your dog to be so good? And that's something I hear over and over and over again. But if, if you're just really not getting that, that help, I'm telling you, the, you, you can go pay your shelter to be able to just listen to what I'm saying and it'll get done. It'll get done. It, it will get done. Because it's, it's, there's no tricking here. There's no games here. There's no extraness here. There's no manipulation here. There's no deceitfulness. There's no force here. That's what the dogs do not care for. And, and it's just, it, it just is what it is. When, it, when we got the people out here on the, what do you call it, the, the, the force-free side, that are, we want to ban all this and ban these tools. At the end of the day, I can't, I can't disagree with them. I, can't, I just can't. I can't say, oh, oh you, they shouldn't have, we should this and shouldn't that. Because just for me, I thought personally that I needed all that to be able to have a nice dog. And then now that I'm realizing that I actually don't, I'm like, I can't, I can't give them any pushback. Outside of just, I hope that certain things that I think are going to happen shouldn't happen. But as far as banning tools, <laughs> I could care less. I'm going to get more business because then more people are going to find out and actually listen to the real ways of actually getting true help with their dogs. More people are going to want to find the, the real information. Outside of thinking that the force and the fear is how to get the dogs in there. And again, if you're saying to me that you put slip leash or put prong collar, put e-collar, my dog isn't in fear, I, I, I just want to see it. I want to see it. I, I want to see it. I want to see your dog not in fear and, and listening to you. And the way that I want to be able to see that is by you taking that equipment off on your dog and telling your dog to hang out and do everything that you've been telling to to do without all that on. And then maybe I'll listen to you. But still, I doubt that you're able to do that consistently for other people, and especially in a rapid space. Because a lot of y'all trainers out here, y'all dogs are like 8, 9, 10, 15 years old. Get you a puppy and show that you, you don't need to rely upon that stuff to be able to get a really nice dog. Because I'm already watching someone with a puppy in their little series right now that you're already going towards pressure on this puppy. You're already going towards these methods already instantly to this puppy. And your older dogs look good. They don't need equipment. They don't need this. They don't need that. Because it's an eight-year-old dog that's just, it, it's done, man. When my border collie turns eight, he turns nine, he's just going to be hanging. He's like, oh, it's, it's the world. That's what happens, man. They get old. They get seasoned. They just, they don't, they don't, they don't do the same stuff anymore. But get, let me see these puppies. Let me see these young dogs from the shelter you just picked up uh, two days ago. And that's been living a life of who knows what the heck's going on. And let me see you get that dog in a good place. Then that's, that's the, the real things that we should be listening to and paying attention to. Not the people that are, that are doing all the manipulation. And at the end of the day, these people, <laughs> this is the dog trainers, between dog trainers like to say, I got a challenging dog. That's why my dog doesn't listen all that great. That's why I can't get the prong collar off. And that's why I can't get the e-collar off my dog. That's why I always have to keep giving, because I have that really, really hard challenging dog. That's, no, everyone does. We all do. Every one of our dogs is extremely challenging. And dog trainers' dogs are, I'm going to say, maybe a little because it's deceitful because we're trying so much with them as opposed to just doing nothing with them. We're trying this and trying this and trying this and trying this, and your relationship is trash. It's getting worse and worse and worse. Trust me, I've been down this route. And the day that I got away from it, I got dogs that just, I, I just chill. I don't, <laughs> I'm so calm with my dogs because they're calm. And it started with me being calm to give them that calm. And now we're all calm. When I start to get irritated, I know that I'm doing something that I'm being disrespectful. If I'm ever irritated with my dog, I'm being disrespectful. Instant, I just instantly know it's like a, it's a cue. If I'm on a walk and I'm like, oh, why aren't you? I'm like, whoop, I'm, what am I doing that is disrespectful to you right now? Because as soon as I switch that, my dog's going to instantly, instantly, it's not going to take years from at this moment, but instantly I'm going to stop being irritated and see, oh, we're good to go now. Everything's fine. I've been testing that with myself every single day this past month. That if I'm irritated, I'm disrespecting. And when I stop and scan and see, I'm like, wow, I, I was doing, I'm sorry. And then we're just pff, smooth sailing. It's an amazing thing. It's an absolutely amazing thing. And that's why it starts with sit, sit, sit. And then fourth, fifth, fourth, fifth one, you give him that treat and he's not doing that perfect sit state. When you go to the kitchen to come back, you get irritated. If you're irritated, you are disrespecting that. I'm just, I'm going to, I don't want to guarantee, but I'm going to guarantee that, man. If you have a sense of frustration and irritation in you, you are doing something that is, because the dog is displaying that back to you, what you're putting out there. You're, you're just mirroring each other's back and forth. I just wouldn't like more people to think about that. Thank you.